Do you want to learn more about the real Belize and listen to locals and expat stories that are actually living here in Belize? Well, you're in the right place right now. You're listening to Belize Talk Radio, and I'm your host, Macarena Rose. Welcome back, everybody, to Belize Talk Radio. And right before break, we were talking about the Margay cat with, you said, the kryptonite eyes, because they can see at nighttime, right? They're nocturnal. Night vision. Night, they have night vision, night, night vision. goggles. Yeah. Well, they have big eyes, don't they? And so then what's after the Margay on your... After the market, we have a big tree you can see featured there. If people don't know, they could easily say, well, that's a mahogany tree, it's a cedar tree. But the features of the tree, the texture, you know we call it the sapodilla tree. Very interesting tree in Belize, in our jungles. It has been interesting for many years. It is still today, but mainly for wood. But in the past, it was used more for a sap that the tree would release. We see that in the early uh, 18th, 19th century, and we see that uh, Mr. Wrigley out of Chicago was getting all the base of chewing gum out of then British Honduras. It's interesting that the first chiclets that were made came from this type of sub from British Honduras. Seems to be somewhere they presume in the late 50s. His warehouse is burnt in Chicago and he lost most of the sub. Today it is believed the Japanese are creating a synthetic stuff so there's not a demand for the sub anymore. But chicle was one of the dominant products that was exported from British Honduras, mainly San Ignacio and Cayo area. Wow. So this was known as El Cayo, the sap producing area. So the sapadilla tree, which produces a small fruit, we call the sapadilla, it is edible by man and animal, but when you tap the tree, you just tut, cut the bark a bit and a white sap starts popping up where the chiclero, we call the men who cut the trees, they put a, plas a rubber bag under to catch the sap. They would be out there for periods of three months tapping the trees. The trees do not die, it does not damage them. They continue flourishing and can get sap after a couple of years again. So it closes out, once they score the tree and they catch the, the it, chicle, they actually will it heal will, itself? It will heal a bit eventually, but you'll always see the mark where it was chopped 15, 20, 50 years ago. Wow, and when they come back, do they score the same place? Another area. Another okay. area. Yes, yeah. So what they would do, climb the trees, have a special rope that holds them up, and then you have to have a very sharp machete and they do chopping in a Y formation up the tree and then every branch possibly that they can to get the sap. So they would go and tap the trees so much per day. Then in the evening they collect all the sap, take it back to the camp. Then that camp is put in a special big metal container that in Spanish, they, I remember they call it a paila. Paila. And then they would boil the chicle. And it's amazing you see the men with large pieces of wood boiling away at the chicle for hours. That is to get out all the impurities and to get the sap to a consistency that it could be molded into blocks. I always remember vividly seeing and I could, it always amazes me how they handle this texture of gum that is maybe I would say eight, a thousand degrees heat, Ooh. Fahrenheit. What the men would do, they took soap, bars of soap, and they would paste the soap on their hands and they would then manipulate the sap that is bubbling and they would have square blocks board that they made and they put the sap in there and the weight would have been 90 pounds and that piece of uh, weight of cut chicle they call it in Spanish the word was marqueta. marqueta then that sap would be brought in blocks from the jungle three months after to the buyers that would then re-chop it reboil it make really purified gum sap that would be taken to Chicago or exported and then you got the chiclets and all the other type of chewing gum from there wow Sometimes we still can get the sap in Belize today, but only for the tourism market. And I can often safely say it is the only sap and the gum that will be for true sugar-free. <laughs> Nothing added. Okay. That's true. I, right from the tree. I remember as a kid, I used to go to a gentleman by the name of Victor Galvez who used to process. He was one of the buyers. He would take and he would give us 25 cents a, a quarter of a dollar to cut an entire block of chicle. I would chop away at the chicle. But why we did that? Because some people would put impurities in it. They would put stones, they would put pieces of wood, sometimes metal to build a weight of 90 pounds. Oh. So we had to purify it, make sure that we got a good product. If not, we would lose the market. 
So sometimes I would chop a small piece of the gum and I would take it me to school. Every morning I nibble off a piece, I put the rest by. My gum would last me for months and that was the best gum money could not buy. You can ever live in okay. ever, yeah. ever living. Uh, so you will see the feature where we have, they used to use a lot of uh, donkeys or mules to carry the chicle, they would load the blocks on them of 90 pounds. Uh, a donkey could carry maybe 10, 15 blocks on him of 90 pounds and he would just, they had loads of them that would just know the trail. One man would just lead the group and they would all follow to the camps. At the campsite, maybe lasting for a month, they would just cut leaves from the jungle, make a, what we call a temporary shelter, where they would be out there for three months, they would tell stories at night, while the men chop and they boil the chicle. So that was one of the main products taken of Den El Cayo and the San Ignacio area many years ago. So I thought that was one of the fittingest pieces of art to put in the area at that time. I really agree. I did not even know all of this amazing history. And so, and I can I imagine a lot of people here don't know. So now we're sharing it with them, so they all know. What about the, what was the flavor of the gum? The gum, it had a unique flavor because of the fruit which is the sapadilla. The sapadilla has a tartish, sweet, uh, melon taste-like, similar the gum would have. The, and okay. it, that could blow big bubble gum. For some reason, the texture of it, when you chew it, you could blow a bubble gum without any fear that it sticks on your face. Really? Today, yes, the modern one, it sticks on you and you're gonna pull it off. The real bubble gum could blow nice, close, and never bother you. So that is one of the features that was very interesting. Like I said, the kids never knew. Today, they eat this chicle, or they eat chewing gum, and they would never know where it came from. But this one today does not come from here because the synthetic stuff has taken over. But if they only knew that this country and this specific tongue and this area produced all the chewing gum that was used once in the entire globe. Okay, because that is how it came. So when you look at it, they say that this area, what we call chicle was king at that time. Okay, and that was the backbone of the economy of this area and Belize. And then British Honduras at that time. Well, it sure deserved a place in your mural. <laughs> Definitely, without any shadow of a doubt, yeah. From there, what I did, uh, the stairs, I would have wanted to paint the stairs a bit, but I en enhanced a bit of a Maya texture, Maya designs of features. Uh, just the knowledge I have about glyphs and about Maya culture, I integrated a couple of features there, just a basic uh, head formation of glyphs. Not any significant meaning, because it would be hard to tell a total story there. If I was given the choice, and my time would have been uh, more available. I wanted to paint the stairway and put the steps of glyph going up because pitch, one of the interesting pictures I noticed on the stairway, it's a total of nine stairs. Nine, nine is a very interesting feature. It's not what we call nine levels to the underworld. So maybe in the future, if Belize Tourist Board or some other group get interesting, I can coat the stair area and on the nine levels to the underworld, put an entire text of glyphs, something like they have in Copan a stairway with all the glyphs of the long conch and different features there. That would be an interesting piece of art to put there maybe sometime in the future. It's a thought to contemplate. Okay? I think it's a good one to contemplate. Yeah. We continue from there and we have the featured 21. A beautiful design with blue and white stri stripes across. I use the same design they used uh, 20, 32 years ago because that is a specific design that they did for the 21st, which is our date of independence. So I decided to put the same feature. I got a couple comments of the people in town. Why do you put that there? It's political. I say it's not political. It is pride. It's our nation. It's the date of independence. It has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with the rise of an emerging nation, a claiming our total integrity as a country. Then I had no choice, but I have to feature our most important symbol, the national flag of nation. So I had no shadow of a doubt that it was an interesting feature. Why I put it at that specific point? Because if you look on top, there's a, sh there's a shed where they carry the events of the coronation of the queen. They have all the features. There is where they'll have the flag raising ceremony uh, later, a couple hours from now. So I think that's the best area to put that. Any camera that takes a shot of that area will feature the date of independence and the national uh, flag. The flag is very interesting. Maybe. The, the flag has features that we can talk about if you look at it. It has a stripe of a, of a what we call a ribbon or a, a banner of a, the olive branch. About 50 total leaves around, we would say, which are the 50 years of a political party in Belize, one of the first political parties. Then inside, it has two men, a man of a, of a mestizo culture like, and a man uh, of a clear culture would have been, maybe they believe the Englishman. So both men were featured here with paddles and axe, 
where they would move the, the paddles were used to, canoe, for, to paddle the canoes and the axe were to cut the mahogany down. It's one of the dominant features in our, it's one of the only flags in the world that features humans also. Very interesting. On ah. top of a design that is there, you'll see the a mahogany tree featured, which was a, a dominant feature in the growth of this country. Uh, below, there's a banner that marks in Latin, sub umbra floreo. The word sub umbra floreo translates to uh, under the shade I shall flourish. Apparently not under the shade of a mahogany tree, but under the protectorate of a British uh, country we would have flourished as a nation. So that is the, the what you call the coat of arms at the flag. The colors are interestingly blue, very dominant for the determination of a people. The white is for the peace that is in the center, but the opposition party had a role to play that they integrated red. They wanted red to be featured in the flag because for some reason in the past they thought a blue and white flag was representative of Guatemala's flag. So the opposition integrated the red that today is a dominant feature in the flag also. So it's red, blue with the white center. Still, what we always cherish, like the Union Jack, red, white and blue. So it's a real, very beautiful flag, proud of my flag. You should be proud of your flag. It is a beautiful flag and I do like that it has the two men on it. Yes. Right. And I never thought about it. You, when I think about all of these different countries' flags, mm, no country. you don't see them with uh, people, people on them. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only flag in the world that features humans. And that makes sense because Belize is such a local community, the whole country. Oh, yeah. It's a community. So it is powerful that they have people on their flag. That's why we always say in our, in our country, it's one for all and all for one. And like our team this year is, again, like I mentioned, I like to mention it. It's a I am Belize, you are Belize, land of the free. You know, very beautiful team for this year's celebration. I think it just fits that we are now united as a nation and we have a positive uh, vision of the future of our country. From there, I feature a, a very interesting piece. Uh, I painted that design like a, the, uh, the wall is we're cracking. Gonna, we're gonna go over there. We're gonna take a quick break and take a second, listen to some good commercials and we're gonna Move our location so we can explain this even better for you. I'm your host, Macarena Rose, on Overseas Radio Network.